this is a mic check and it should be okay. There, it's just that I don't have ultra low latency in my settings today. Five seconds delay, so it's okay. Okay, but uh, one more thing that I need to do is that I need to find a way that, uh, so it's an audio window capture. This is the one that I'm using, so I need to close it. But not willing to find my, uh, this window. Don't know why. I could put the screen there too, so that could be another option. So I can put um, display capture. Oh, I have a display capture already. I'm going to use this one if needed. OK, window capture number two not needed. I think we're all set. So I have audio capture. I have two audio captures. I need to take another one away. Hopefully, there is still a voice that is coming out. Should be no echo whatsoever. Is it good? Sounds promising. I think that it is OK. Something is off. Yeah. About what? what? You're transparent. I'm transparent. <laughs> so it's a little bit of settings of uh, my chroma key. Video capture. So uh, yeah, this is not very good. The chroma key settings is not very good. Better? Better. It's better. Much better. Green screen is not perfect, but it's okay. It's good enough. Good enough. Sorry, guys. I uh, takes me uh, still another two minutes or so before I need to, because I need to get some coffee, and then I'm ready to go. Are you guys ready to go? Yeah, we, we can start at 4.15, always 4.15, okay? Is that uh, I put the streaming on because I need some time to do my settings, okay? I'm going to mute myself, and uh, for online participants, I will go and get the coffee, and uh, the cafeteria is next to me, so should take no time at all.
no, no need to be here. Just let me just uh, put this on. No, not this one. I don't want to show this one, but uh, this one. Yeah, one and a half hour. So, what do you guys think? Should we have a break in the middle, or we'll see? <laughs> so there, good. So no break needed. You sure about that? He don't need any break because he would like to go home early. So that that's the reason. In your office, okay. Hey, uh, anyone here with computer? Because I need uh, a volunteer here. So you have a computer. Because, you know, I have here two screens, and I can kind of see what happens in my YouTube studio, but I have 44 online participants. And they sometimes give a, because they have this opportunity to use a chat. So sometimes they ask a question, sometimes they ask a comment, or they make a comment, they place a comment, and it's really hard for me to see, because I'm focusing on you guys, not so much about online participants, even though that there are, you know, quite a good number of online participants. So if there is a volunteer, you can be the one. Okay, that's a fantastic. You can put it in your CV. You can say online, I mean, YouTube officer simulation of mechatronic machine 2023. That looks great. Make sure you mention officer or YouTube officer. Okay, so are we ready to get started? I think we're ready to get started. Respect. What's that? That's the sign that I know when I, because all these settings and everything takes a while, and I wanted to remove it. Uh, I'm going making a little bit of editing to my my uh, videos. The only editing that I'm doing is that I'm taking this beginning part away because all these uh, you know camera is upside down and the voice is on, not on, and so on and so forth. So I want to take it off. So you will have a more pleasant experience when you are watching my YouTube videos later. Okay. So we are good to go. Welcome. Uh, we here in a class entitled Simulation of a Mechatronic Machines. Five credits. And uh, this class takes this first period and the second period, then we're gonna close just before the Christmas. Let's say we're gonna close in December. And uh, this is gonna be one of the classical university courses. Classical university courses in a sense that how could I explain you things that are highly theoretical? They're very mathematical, highly theoretical things that takes an effort to learn. But I'm hoping that you can capture the kind of the kind of the thinking, like university kind of thinking out of this class. And I'm gonna have a lectures every single week. So there's no seminar work, there's no presentation I'm expecting you to deliver. So it's me all the time. So I'm the one that is teaching you and I'm hoping you to work, but the way that I would like you to work will be something that is like a weekly assignment, simulation work, and then the in-class quizzes. I will explain all the crown rules to you momentarily. But welcome to class. I feel there's a lot of fun for each of us, not just for me, for you too. We'll see that. Okay, so let me introduce you to teachers. So, uh, so I'm the, the one that is uh, responsible of all the lectures. But you're going to meet Dr. Surat Jaiswal next week. He's the one that is responsible of guided tutorials. And he's a very pleasant guy. He's not like me. He's a nice guy. So he's in your side of the field. I'm a little bit uh, like a vicious person. So, But anyways, you only need to meet me in, uh, in a lecture. No, nowhere else. Then the, the person you just met, the, the person that was helping us to do the technical settings, was a Mustaba. A Mustaba is the guy that helps us to do the crating. Most of the crating is automated, but every now and then we need to use a Mustaba's help to, to do the crating. Many of the things here in this class are automated, including plagiarism check, which we're gonna discuss a little bit later. So there's gonna be a mathematical tool that kind of figure out whether or not there's any wrongdoing from your end. Uh, that's something that uh, you're gonna learn soon. Okay, here are the phases. Me, well, that's uh, maybe too much Aki because there is a here Aki and then in the screen, Suraj is uh, doc, excuse me, Dr. Suraj. 
is a, is the one that is taking care of the kind of tutorials, like I mentioned, and the Mustafa you met just a little while ago. So this is a teaching team. And let me see. Then, just this is information to online participants. So, as we now have a YouTube officer, so if you have any comments, any doubts, anything you would like to to express to the rest of the class, just type it. Use a chat window, and that will be the way to communicate with me. I'm not going to hear you. I'm not going to read your chat immediately, but uh, because online officer, YouTube officer, you will we're going to hear your comment a little later. So that's how we're going to go. What happened today? We're going to get started today by something that is very, very important you to understand. You need to understand the ground rules. You need to understand what I'm expecting you to do. And that's how we're going to get started. That's the ground rules. If any doubts, anything that is not clear to you, you need to let me know today. Because later, it may be too late already. So you need to be able to understand every single detail, what I'm expecting you to do, what I'm expecting you not to do. There are a few things that I hate a big time, and you shouldn't do it. Then uh, once we're done with that, then I will explain you why. Why this course makes sense. You know, why this is something that I'm excited about this course, and why I'm hoping you too become to be excited about the simulation. Why this simulation is a big deal, and how it's going to change our life. And that's uh, my introduction part. Mathematics needed in a course, and that's going to be a very short overview because I'm not going to touch much of the math in this class. I'm going to just use the math, but if you feel shy about the math, that's okay because uh, we have uh, plenty of um, links to the Cairns Academy. Cairns Academy is a fantastic YouTube site that you can learn the details of the math. And, uh, and each time we're progressing in the simulation subject matter, we have another set of links. Okay, now, if you are having difficulties to understand what's, uh, let's say, the matrix operation, go ahead and take a look at this particular part of the cons agony. That's how it works. And then comes real deal. Then we're going to get started. The, the first thing that is related to kinematics. The kinematics is the art to describe bodies and particles in two and three dimensional space. The first thing that you need to learn today, already today, will be related to how to describe rigid bodies in planar case. Planar means two dimensional space. There's gonna be, I mean, this class mostly is related to planar cases. We're gonna discuss shortly about the spatial three dimensional cases, but mainly like rotations only. Not like really there are more detailed kinematics related to spatial cases, but a little bit uh, that you get an idea how is that the body rotation can be described in three-dimensional space. You need to know that because you're using commercial software that is operating in three-dimensional space. Okay, and that's where this is coming from too. This is a coordinate system. And this is a positive rotation. And this is respect. That's the way we say hello, okay? Next time you see me, respect, okay? <laughs> okay, all right, very good, very, very good. Okay, uh, let's get started from the ground rules. Teaching, uh, oh, here, by the way, take a look at the subject matters that I'm about to explain you. I promise this is highly theoretical, and yes, it is. Look at the, some of the things like virtual displays and virtual work, oh my God. You have heard it before, but this time we take it seriously. I'm expecting you to understand the fundamentals of each of the things that I listed here. So it's going to be a little bit of a rocky road. I can guarantee you that, but that's okay. We walk together, so you take it easy. If any doubts, I'm here to help you. But not superficially, but something that I'm expecting you to understand the fundamentals. Why we do it, what's the concept behind, how it goes. Okay. Generalized inertia force is quadratic velocity vector. Oh my God, it sounds very bad. And it is very bad. But that's okay. We go it together. So we are this team spirit we're going to use to, to make us to survive this uh, rocky road. Equation of motion, augmented formulation, constraint stabilization. You have never heard these words before. That's why you need to follow the lectures. So it's not possible to pass this course by watching Discovery Channel. Discovery Channel, they, they discuss all about the 
science, but not this level of details. Not possible. So don't think that, okay, I'm going to figure it out this uh, just the day before the midterm exam. No, 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 it's not going to work like that. So we're going to work daily basis, weekly basis, and that's how it's going to be possible to pass this course. Then it comes even more complicated. Then there's embedded technique, flexible body, so on and so forth. But that's going to be later. Then. All right. Lectures every Tuesday at the same time. You can come here to see me. Or alternatively, you can go and uh, lock yourself into the YouTube. And in the YouTube, uh, you can follow that, that, that lectures like, like you do it here. We're the warning to you. And I know that when you are in watching this through the YouTube, there's a lot of uh, temptations not to follow my lectures, but browsing in website for a very interesting, going in a Netflix discovery channel, like I mentioned earlier, and then get somehow drifted away from the subject matter. Don't do that. But focus what I'm telling, because every moment matters here. You scared already? <laughs> you shouldn't. Because like I say, I'm here to help you to survive. Okay. All right. So this is my YouTube channel. So it's a uh, multi-body system dynamics. That's my YouTube site and uh, tutorials. More information will be available momentarily. So uh, Suraj is out of his office this week. Uh, he will be back, I hope, end of this week. And uh, he's going to email to you the instructions on how you can uh, participate uh, tutorials. Yes, sir. No tutorials this week. No tutorials this week. Sorry about that. You know, the systems that are offered by university, I'm struggling big time, more than you. I can guarantee you that. You know, that was a big surprise to me that we actually have two Moodle sites. The one that is somehow entitled as a midterm exam, which I don't understand why they have a page like that, and then the actual course Moodle site. Very confusing to me. So use only the one that is actual course, not the one that is related to midterm exam, because soon I'm not going to uh, update that page any longer. So, but I realized that uh, I think at yesterday or something, so it's, it's a little surprising to me too. Okay, tutorials, total of 12 weeks, and we get started next week. So, week, uh, so uh, here in Finland, we are sometimes calling week as a numbers not by the, what, is a, what day is a Monday, but the week as a, as a number. So we get started next week. There is a total of seven guided tutorials getting started next week. And then uh, there is a help that you can complete your simulation assignment. By the way, don't make any notes here. Just listen to me. No need to take any pictures because every material, every slides, all the material will be available in the Moodle site. Everything that I'm expecting you to know will be available in the Moodle site. Right? Okay, those are the tutorials. Creating. Okay, here comes the most important information. So this is it. This is what you need to understand. Let's get started. The, the font that is put it in the writing in a green font. In the creating, you need to complete a minimum of 35% of maximum points. That's what you need to do. 35%. And, um, you know, the way you can do it, you know, the grade is broke down, as mentioned, in a red font. Written exams, they, which are two midterm exams. This is the most classical way to do the written exam part. It's worth of 35% uh, of all the, I mean, the maximum points. Weekly homework, 30%. 30%. So this is something that you need to submit or you need to do by using the Moodle site. But there will be a student-specific uh, student Initial values to do that little bit of computing by yourself. You do all this computing and you can score 30% of the maximum amount of points. Then there is a simulation work. And this is, uh, by the way, in exam and simulation work, we're using this math <coughs> formula to figure out if there's any plagiarism, any wrongdoing. Any wrongdoing, we uh, don't want to hear your explanation, which are probably, I mean, your strongest, your case is very strong, I trust that. But we don't want to hear that. So we automatically submit that to student affairs office. And the person that is very willing to hear your story is a rector. So rector is the one that is listing your excuses, uh, not us. 
we are always just passing the information to administration and they will call you. You don't want to see that to happen. I can guarantee you that. Last week when I met some of you, I mentioned that there are two big things that you can pick, two mistakes, two criminal actions you can do in your life that never, ever goes away. Murder, black accusation. They never, ever goes away from your life. They hunt you down the rest of your life. When you think about the criminal action, it kind of makes sense to do the criminal action if the, if the award is big enough. Here, not the case. You win very little when you do the placarism. And the consequences are really, really severe. You know, they kick you off from the university. If you're a visiting student, they're going to send their information to your home university that this and this particular person was guts by doing the placarism. Can we send him back or her back? Not nice. Don't do that. Are you now more scared? No. <laughs> no need to be scared. If you just don't do any wrongdoing, though, that's going to be fine. But then in-class quizzes. In-class quizzes are something that I'm explaining something. And next thing that I do, I'm asking a question. So it's a question of multiple choices. How it actually goes. And we're going to practice that momentarily. So my first in-class quiz is already almost ready for you. So uh, you can just select uh, the option that you feel that is correct. Sometimes there may be, may be multiple choices that are correct. Uh, that's how you can collect the points. If you collect enough points, you will get extra grade to your final grade. All right. Freebet's knowledge is not needed. Not needed. But something that is needed, and that's can-do attitude can do attitude because we're going to speak about highly theoretical concepts. You all, each of you have a very big brain, so you can make it happen. You need to trust yourself. So can do attitude. That's very, very important for us. Okay, clear. And no comments, no questions. Doable? Yes, no, doable. What you should not do? Murder and plagiarism, okay? Plagiarism and murder. Don't, do, don't commit the murder. Don't commit the plagiarism because they will hunt you down. And I, I know that every year there is a, you know, a group of people that, you know, it's, a, it's just a joke. I'm not serious about that. I'm making a lot of jokes, but I don't, I don't joke about the plagiarism. That's a serious thing. So there's a lot of flexibility, a lot of layback attitude and LUT attitude, LUT university, but... What comes to the plagiarism, that's where the humor stops. So, all right, read an exam. Two online midterm exams. So those are something that you can do by using just a modal database. So you log in using your student ID number, and then you have a two hours or three hours time to do your midterm exam. You have one week time to do that, and two attempts. We'll explain the details a bit later. But the first one is after, uh, after seven weeks of lectures, there is a one week that you have two attempts to do your midterm exam. Highly recommended that you do your first attempt already on Monday morning. Then you see how well you score. And if you're scoring high, fine, then you're off the hook. But if you're not happy with your scoring, then you can study all week and do it again on Sunday afternoon or whatever is a good time for you. So he said, whatever you want, whenever you want. So that's all possible. But here we have this plagiarism tool that we're checking, okay, who is actually the person that is doing that? And then uh, there is also this classical, uh, there are two of these uh, midterm exams. We're going to compute the average, and that's going to be that part that covers the 35% of your final grade. All right? There's also this possibility to do the final exam. Not recommended. But it, if you're one of those classical, old class people, yes, you can do the paper exam as well. But I need to tell you, you know, it goes in such a way that the first opportunity will be in the beginning of January. That exam is uh, fairly difficult, so I don't recommend you to go there. But then, very heavily, the level of difficulty started to increase. The second attempt, which is uh, uh, end of uh, February, the level of difficulty is so, I mean, so challenging that you're going to really cry when you see the exam paper. 
Third one, I am unable to pass that by myself. So don't do it. So if you really need to do the exam, take the first one. Do everything you can to avoid the last one, because that's going to be hard. All right? So that's how it goes. Weekly homework, there is a, a total of nine weeks. Uh, the first week will be available right after this lecture. So something that we're expecting you to do by yourself. And we're going to use a student-specific uh, initial values. So don't copy whatever is uh, you know, in your fellow student, because your numbers are not the same. Uh, so uh, a total of 100 points in nine weeks. That's how it goes, and you're going to see the details very soon. Simulation work is something that is uh, given in a week 44, so it's, uh, what is it, several weeks from now. So not right now, but a little bit later. And then uh, in-class quizzes, a total of 24 points. These are the weeks that I'm asking in-class quizzes, so that's how it goes. In-class quizzes, you need to use a Socrative app in your mobile phone, or if you're using computer, you can lock yourself into the Socrative dot. Come. So please install the Socrative app to your mobile phone because momentarily is my first in-class quiz. And that's when you start counting the points, collecting the points. Okay? All right? In-class quizzes, you need to know the room number, and room number is LUT, easy to memorize. Lock yourself to LUT room, and then you need to use your student ID number to get in. It's going to show your name as XX, first name X, last name X. Just that I don't want to show your identity, the soccer team, but we know what that stands for. So just use your student ID number to log in. You can do that already because the first in class quiz is waiting for you. All right? Clear? Have you already installed the soccer team? Not yet? Okay, do it, do it now because uh, you need it soon. All right, all the lecture material is available in the Moodle site. And now this comes, here's a very important information. So the Moodle course ID number is 17239. This is where all the material appears. I think that right now it's uh, maybe mostly empty. You can see that there is a uh, like first period, second period topics, but most of them are empty. But I'm start uploading the material momentarily right after this class. If not today, then tomorrow morning. Okay? There is a lecture notes. Yes, sir. Okay, take a zeros away if you have zeros in the beginning. So uh, if your student ID number, there is a, still you cannot get in. So is anyone able to get in? Okay, some of them are able to get in. So you got... Okay, first thing you need to select that, you need to, is asking the room, now, room name, room name is LUT. Then the next thing is a student locking. Okay? I don't want to go off from the camera, but you see how it goes. Okay, let me, let me try this. This is a risky business, but let me try. Uh, oh, yeah, I cannot do any drawings here with this pen. Okay, first LUT, and then your student number. It works. You ready? Student, student, student. student ID number. Without, you, zeros. without zeros. Without zeros. If you have zeros in the beginning, take it away. You're in. You're ready for the in-class quiz? First one. Are you scared? Me too. Me too. Okay, let me tell you what happened. This was a last year. Last year, I have doing the, I've been doing these in-class quizzes five years now. Last year happened something weird. All the students were able to pinpoint the correct answer, so we scored 100%. I was crying. I said, I promise that if that's going to happen in my lifetime, I'm going to make a big dancing in here in a podium. And I kind of did that too. I don't, I'm not going to make any promises this year, but if you're going to score 100%, there will be a surprise, positive surprise to you. Okay? All right, very good. Any comments uh, for normal online participants? No comments. Okay. Maybe somebody can give a comment just to check if it works or not. Just like X. Okay. 
material, everything is, uh, will be available in the Moodle database, including the lecture notes. So lecture notes is something that it's, um, I recommend you to print it out, keep it with you all the time. So whatever you have extra time, open it, read it, make your understand to be more, or more thorough. Okay, and the homework assignments, Everything, everything will be available and the correct answers will be available in a Moodle database. There are also pre-recorded material that is actually fantastic. This is something that you can find by, by going to uh, YouTube and typing chemical. And then you can find short videos that are explaining this subject matter. There are five min max. Highly recommended you to take a look at these videos. So they're really explaining what's to do with the simulation and why we do what we do. Okay. Makes sense. Guidelines. My instructions to you. Trust yourself. You'll find your way to LUT University, so you will find your way to pass this course. I can guarantee you that. But you need to do something to make it happen. So you need to work consistently. And not just uh, now when there is a midterm exam, and not just when there is a deadline to submit your simulation assignment, but Please work every week. Because what's going to happen in this class is that the level of difficulty is increasing highly progressively. What I'm going to explain to you today, you're going to laugh like, oh my God, Aki, this is a ridiculously simple. Uh, maybe I'm not going to come next week because I already know this back and forth, so I'm so good. And then you skip one week and you come back, you don't believe your eyes. There be many occasions that the students are unable to find their way out of the lecture rooms. They are so confused. They are like here, and then the, finally the janitor takes their hand and you know, walk them to main entrance. They're so confused. That can happen to you too if you're not following me every week. Okay, follow me every week. What's even better than that? Every day. That's even better. Okay, now do exercises by yourself. Do everything by yourself. This weekly homework is kind of preparing yourself to learn the material. And I know that you can ask your, your fellow students, can you please help me? It's okay to do the teamwork, but make sure you understand the concept by yourself. That's extremely important. Okay, good. Still no comment. Picture. Okay. Okay, there is a there are comments. I can see that there is a comment. Everything is good. So they are happy. Online participants are happy. This is it. My first in class quiz. My question is this how can someone pass this course? Options are Thorough networking, like going parties. Party is a way to solve this course. You just keep on parties and it's gonna work out like automatically using ChatGPT, because ChatGPT probably can solve this too by putting in the effort, like keeping up with the lectures and materials every week or even daily. Just taking it easy. Aki okay, is a laid back guy, so he would probably let me pass the course anyway because a relaxed attitude. So later you come and say, hey, I was busy with my parties and my other stuff, so can you just let me pass this course? Which one is correct? You're answering that. Go and look in yourself to the chat, not chat TPD, but uh, Socrative. You can ask this from chat TPD too. Ask. And then click the one that you feel that is correct. We're going to see how well we do. You guys ready? Did you answer it already? Okay. What's going to be success rate today? No, I don't think so. So it's not going to be 100%, but uh, how high it is. So this is my, uh, I see I have 80 answers already. So let me just see how this displays in uh, YouTube, because I would like the online participants to see this as well. Mm -hmm. There's quite a bit of delay, I see that. Okay, so it's not able to show this. So it's still displaying my... Okay, so I need to do this.
Okay, just a second. I will just double check that everything is correct. It's still, it's almost like there is a little bit of delay in my streaming. Okay, so somebody's unable to lock in. Okay. All right. The, okay, so this may be, uh, now if somebody's having a hard time to lock in, let me know. Let me know. So I can, I can take a look at what's the problem in your student ID number, if any, and then uh, I can hopefully sort it out. Okay, let me just uh, see what's uh, wrong with this guy because I'm unable to, to show the other screen. Yeah, yeah. Was that? It's not working the way that I want. So it's a, uh, because I would like to show this display, video capture. Yeah, I know uh, I have the here and other, other screen. Okay, I think this is it because it was, yeah, I think that I know what the problem was. Okay, so you see this one. Okay, you saying the success rate is 100%. 100%. So everyone, including the online participants were listen to me. Listen to me. Seriously? I think they were listening to me. Okay, so let's take a look. So let's get, let's see how we get started in this class. Results. Oh my God. Oh my God. Pauli, can you take a picture of this with me? I'm going to email this director. Look at me, the best teacher ever. So you understand the crown rules back and forth. Fantastic start, fantastic start. It's not going to keep it like that, so I can guarantee you that. Great start. Okay, I'm happy now, very happy. Yes, sir. So, uh, yeah, everyone will get the points because I'm so happy. No dancing here, but uh, I promised something surprising, something pleasant to you, but I need to figure out what that could be. Okay, we'll get back to that. We'll get back to that. Great. Okay, so we continue then. All right, so we're here. So uh, I'm going to take this away. And we're going to continue my PowerPoint presentation here. Ah, oh, okay, not this one. I don't want to take this one. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes. Yep, correct, correct, correct. That's, that's, that's what is very, very confusing to me. Because what I learned is that we have two modal page, two modal pages, eight and nine. So, uh, so I don't know why we have two. This is the first time that happened like this. So please do not use the number eight, the one that the last digit is a number eight, but use the one that is number nine. Okay. I think that I need to send the instructions to you, to you later. Okay. Introduction. A little bit about the introduction, and then we're going to move on to math and other subject matters. But crown rules. Everything clear? Absolutely clear. Yes. No, it's, uh, it's going to be based on the multiple choices. So there's uh, quite a bit of math. By the way, thank you for asking that because there's something that I need to add to regarding the midterm exams. But but go ahead, you want to say something else too? Yeah, you can always black your exam. You can always copy that from your fellow students. But we have this tracking system, and uh, if it gets you to do so, that's going to be very unfortunate. So we don't want to hear your explanations, but it's going to be somebody in administration. That's going to be, uh, yeah, you can plagiarize that too, but it's not going to make any sense. But the question related to midterm exam, that was very good because now when you get started with your weekly homework, I recommend you to start using a symbolic math tool because we're going to use matrices and vectors. We need to multiply matrices and vectors. Sometimes we even need to do more advanced uh, matrix manipulations. Those are very, very difficult to do by using pen and paper. Even though that our uh, matrix dimensions are limited, 
but still there is a highly high risk that you do a minor mistakes in your math and then you're scoring incorrectly. So what I recommend you to do is that start familiarizing yourself to symbolic math tool and start building the library to yourself. The library that says that, okay, if there need to be, if you need to, let's say, compute the Jacobian matrix, which is based on partial differentiation, it's doing that for you automatically. So then you don't make any mistakes in your math. So start building the library to yourself. The first item in the library will be that you need to build two by two matrix multiplied by vector that consists of two components. So this is uh, how you're building the library more consistently. And that's what you're going to use. And you can use that in your midterm exam. OK? Makes sense? Yes? So the students were not able to access the model state and then use math because it's just a different allowed to the students. Really? Yes. Not allowed to students. So it's only for me. Really? OK. All right, so uh, stay tuned. So we're going to figure it out. That's a bit later. Sorry, I'm sorry about that. I, I, but I, the, I kept my promise. I said that we're going to have a difficulties in the beginning. I thought the difficulties in the streaming and uh, my lectures, but the, this time the difficulties came in the model. Sorry about that. So I need to sort it out. Yes. No, you can use any symbolic math tool you want. You know, there's a lot of uh, varieties available there, like MathCat. In, in my recommendation, I really, I, because I, my recommend, I'm using Maple myself, my recommendation not to use Maple, because syntax takes a while to learn it. And I don't think you need to do it. So it's uh, too hard for you to use it. I'm using Maple because it's capable to do the like uh, it's uh, capable to deal with a very large size uh, matrices but you don't need that your size, ma size matrices are moderate so uh, and it's a little hard to use that maple is not pleasant to use it's actually very painful to use uh, so i recommend you to take like mathcat that's free i think you can get the free copy and matlab is capable to do the symbolic math tool as well symbolic math computing and i'm sure there's many others as well so whatever you feel that is a uh, that fits to your body. Okay, good. All right, introduction. That will be next. Any other comments, questions? By the way, are we are we? Am I sensing incorrectly? But are we building connection here? Really? Is that allowed? Because usually we have no communication with my students. We don't communicate. The only way we communicate is uh, I'm asking: Is this clear? You say like this, or you that, but most often it's like, like this. Everything clear? Everything okay? So we can continue then. All right. Okay, Mustafa, do we have a technical difficulties? Good. Very good. Very good. Okay, objective of the course. Why this course makes sense? Why this course is important? All right, then, then uh, what the simulation means? What is a simulation we do here? What we are simulating here is a dynamics. This is very important for you to understand. So we are, and the, what, what is a dynamics? It's a motion. Motion that is, is uh, caused because of the forces and moments. That's what we're gonna do here. What I'm hoping you to understand is the difference between the kinematics and dynamics. Kinematics is an art of motion that you can study like, you know, how far my hand can reach. But you necessarily don't um, I mean, in a kinematic analysis, is, is not about the forces, but the motion. So it's a motion analysis. Here we are doing dynamics, which is a motion due to the forces, due to the forces. Okay, we're going to use a technology and method that is called multi-body system dynamics. So you can learn the details about that particular method and how you can build the models, how you can create the equation of motion. It's going to be automatically created for you but you understand how the magic happens under the hood because you are master level students. So it's not okay for a master level students to understand, okay, I do the clicking, I click this and that and that, and then the model is ready without understanding what actually happens under the hood. Because once you understand the theory, 
then you can use the, the modeling tool as it is meant to be used. This is extremely important lesson for you. And then uh, how you can build the, well, the, how you build the simulation model, what are the advantages of simulation? Those are the things that I would like to address. Okay, uh, what we wanted to do in this course, this is a theoretical course. We do use uh, tools, software tools to do the simulation, but I would like you to understand what happens when you click this, when you create the equation of motion, how you could possibly create the equation of motion by yourself. Because creating the equation of motion is based on the certain steps. Everyone can follow these steps. And everyone can model the equation of motion for any mechanical system. Believe me or not. So it's possible. But you just need to be consistent and systematic. How you can be consistent and systematic, that's what I'm going to explain to you. How many of you have heard about the finite element method? Some of you. Okay, finite element method is another computational method that is very good in a number of disciplines, like structural strength analysis. What you do in your finite element modeling is that you are modeling the structure by using small pieces. You're kind of approximating your structure using small pieces. Multibody system dynamics is a kind of the same concept. You are systematically modeling something to make it computer to solve it for you. And then you just need to understand what, I mean, you need to do the interpretation of results. You need to understand what they're standing for. And uh, we're going to practice those. Okay, that's the thing. So I would like you to understand what's the big benefit of computer simulation. And not just the classical way. Oh, yeah, it can speed up the product development. Yes, it can speed up the product development. But it's a bigger story than that. There is a much bigger story than that. And what's this much bigger story? I'm going to spend the entire two hours uh, making big stories about how their life will be different because of the multi-body system dynamics. So there's a lot of, uh, lot of advantages. What are these advantages? We will get back to that. And then also it's uh, very important to understand what's the relation between the simulation and reality. Also, what I would really like to see here is you not to get the medical condition that is called simulation disease. Very severe medical condition, there's no medication against. What is the simulation disease? Okay, simulation is disease is a brain disease that goes your head that avoids you to do thinking. You don't do any thinking anymore when you get this, think, this uh, simulation disease, but instead, simplest possible uh, problem you're solving by using very extensive and detailed simulation model. That's simulation disease. And it's a misusing of simulation. Don't do that. And I want, I'm guiding you to avoid the simulation disease. Because what happens easily, you get really excited about simulation and then you do nothing but simulation. Simulation is a tool, is a tool to enhance your thinking. Your thinking. You cannot put your brains off. Quite opposite. All right, learn simulation tools. So you're going to learn tools as well. So that's what's going to happen as well. So we're going to look at the simulation as a, you know, mechanical systems and biomechanical systems as well, but mechanical systems mostly. And we're going to look at the mechanical systems in a way that uh, they are constructed in the mechanical systems. Mechanical systems like the steel structures of the crane. So there's a lift arm, swing arm, piler, and they are actuated by hydraulics, often by hydraulics. We're going to learn how is that you can model the mechanical system plus actuators, but not all the actuators, but the hydraulic actuators. Okay? And then the control system, maybe you need to model that too, because what's extremely important to understand that actuators and mechanical systems are coupled. Like they are coupled in a crane you see in a screen. And now, it will be very unfortunate if you know the, all the details about the actuator system, but have no idea about the mechanical system. Another way around, if you know everything about mechanical systems, but no idea how much force is the actuators can produce, that's not going to be very good for you. So we wanted to keep things in a balance. So you understand that the forces that are driven, the structure comes from the hydraulics or whatever actuator system you're using. And when they are coupled with the mechanical structure, then you can understand 
how are the dynamic responses, how they behave. Okay, that's what I would like you to, to learn here. Okay, so it's pretty simple. So it's like this concept about the actuators and the mechanism, mechanical system is almost like, you know, Newton's second law. So it's like inertia forces equal than external applied forces. This, by the way, is the only equation that I'm expecting you to understand. Newton's second law. Inertia forces equal than external applied forces. Nothing else. But, this famous but, you need to be able to express this equation in a way, in a way that the computers can understand that. Right now, you see the scalar quantities uh, force as a scalar quantity, mass as a scalar quantity, and acceleration as a scalar quantity. Computers will struggle big time if you, if you say, okay, please solve me the response of mechanical system, complex mechanical system, like four bar mechanism using this equation. It cannot do that for you. You need to express this in a language that, they, that the computers can understand. Okay, what is this language? Matrices and vectors. Matrices and vectors, that's what it is. That's why we cannot use a scalar quantities in this class, but matrices and vectors. That's what we're gonna use. Okay, so it goes like this. But anyways, so we, we are using, we are not gonna reinvent dynamics. So we're gonna use Newton's second law, simple like that. But we're gonna express, express this in a way that the computers can solve it for us. Makes sense. You know that the, if you look back your bachelor level courses, the subject matter that most people hate the most is Yes, correct, dynamics. So why people hate dynamics so much? Because it needs so much about thinking. It's always case depending. You know, every single case is a little bit different. So you need to use a lot of brains to figure it out how to solve it. Because, you know, you need to find the kind of relations of this and that. Painful, painful, painful. What we do here is very opposite. We kind of follow the certain steps regardless of the system we're dealing with. And following these steps, we get equation of motion automatically. An equation of motion, by the way, will be even better than you learn from the dynamics because your course of dynamics, the big assumption made, not necessarily mentioned to you, but big assumption made was that you were dealing with the small rotations. I don't know if you noticed that. Do I have here a stick? No, but I have this one. In a dynamic class, is if you were dealing with like a pendulum, the most often used assumption was that pendulum was moving like this much, plus minus 10 degrees, max. We don't do that. So we are dealing with the pendulums that are moving this much. What's the big difference? The big difference is that this one here, when you're modeling this kind of motion, this motion will lead to equation of motion that are nonlinear in their nature. And when they are nonlinear in their nature, there is no longer analytical solutions available. And that's a big difference comparing your dynamic courses. Now you need to solve the responses. You need to solve the equation of motion by using time integration scheme. So you're solving by using computers, not try to figure out, oh, maybe I can connect this and that bodies, or maybe I can find an analytical solution like this and that. No, you're just building the equation of motion and you're making no assumption regarding the magnitude of rotation. So rotation can be large, and when the rotation is large, that's the source of nonlinear. So we deal with the nonlinear dynamics. Okay, good. So, but kind of like the big thing behind is a such simple thing like Newton's second law. And it looked like this. It looked like this when you kind of put it in a form of equation. So it's going to be everything you see here and the end of the class, you're going to laugh like, oh, yeah, I know this. I know this back and forth. So this is uh, describing my this and that component in my equation of motion. Right now, it's looking a little bit scary, right? But you're going to learn it and you're going to know what they are representing to. And uh, the one the equation in the uh, left hand side are the ones that are describing the mechanical systems. The one in the right hand side are hydraulics. That's what we're gonna learn. Okay. All right. So like I say, simulation, 
can be considered as an accelerated learning process when you use it in the right way. So it's not telling you anything else except the tool to learn faster. So you can learn faster what is that affects the, the system, you know, what kind of relation is important in my particular application. That's what you do when you're using simulation. So brains are needed more than ever, more than ever, because you need to learn it, not just they're uh, uh, also very important to be skeptical. Simulations can be correct. They can be correct. What was that? They can be wrong. Also. They can be wrong. Most of them, they are wrong than right. And you, who is uh, deciding which, which is the case? You. You need to be skeptical and not to say, I heard this so many times that this must be correct because computer, computer to me. That makes no sense. You know, inputs can be incorrect. You can make uh, incorrect implementations. There is so many ways you can do the mistakes. You should not trust too much about your mice. You should trust more to your brains. Correct. Your engineering sense. Common sense. But we call it here engineering sense. Okay. Accelerated learning process. And there are simulation different kind of the, you know, this, uh, I'm not sure this place. This excavator is not operated by a human, but it's operated by an artificial intelligence. So there is no human here. So we just uh, let the reinforced learning to operate the, the excavator. We say, okay, your task is to move the dirt from crown to industrial hopper. And it's not doing well in the beginning, so it takes a while to learn it. But, you know, eventually, end of the day, well, this was more than end of the day, end of the couple of weeks, it was able to do so. Now it looks like I would be a better operator than this, but this too. Accelerated learning process. So who is uh, the one that is learning? You or artificial intelligence or whoever you need to, who, whoever need to learn the case. So you can use it in that purposes as well. I mean, that you can explain the artificial intelligence, you know, how to operate the machine. And that's a one opportunity, one possibility. Okay. So we're using, like I said, we're using multi-body system dynamics, which is the systematic way to create the equation of motion. And there are a number of different uh, software opportunities available, how you can use the multi-body system dynamics. Here, we are going to use the one that is based on the MATLAB, and Suras will explain the details. I, by the way, recommend this time already to subscribe the Suraj uh, YouTube channel. So you type Dr. Suraj Jaiswal, and you're going to find his YouTube channel is very popular, very popular. He got uh, 133,000 views in his channel. Think about that. That's a lot. That's a lot. And what subject matter? Multi-body system dynamics. So it's interesting. Suraj, Dr. Suraj Jaiswal. Okay, uh, let me show his, well, he's, uh, he was in a very beginning on my, 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 I think the other way is to find it is that if you, what if you type Simscape Suraj, that might help too. You can try that too. Oh, what happened here? Everything is good. Okay, yeah, yeah, online participants, they, they correct, correct, correct it. Okay. So there's a voice problem? No, uh, just, uh, just wondering that when we ask questions to you in the lecture. Yeah, yeah, others cannot hear it. Yes, that, that there's a problem. So, so please remind me to repeat the question. So if you ask something, I need to repeat it because we're using this mic here. This mic is... Uh, can, can take my voice, but not your voice, which is great too, because you can ask what, whatever you want. And it's not going to end up to be in any recordings and you're not going to be in any of these famous YouTube characters. Okay, good. Here's a few examples how the simulation look and what's this acceleration learning process. Here are a few uh, very difficult cases where the simulation is being used. So the first one is a biomechanical system where we studied the the bone strengthening process. What kind of the exercise make bones stronger? 
is known by athletic, athletics and animal tests that the bone gets stronger if a certain amount of strain and strain rates is imposed the bone. Strains are painful to measure. In theory, you could measure strains in your tibia here. You can take a big knife, make a cut here. Don't do this. But in theory, you can make a big knife, make a cut here, put the strain gates, your tibia, put all the flashback, a lot of painkillers, and then you walk. You're not going to get the permission from ethnical committee to do so. And this is going to be very, very risky. Now, the same, more health way, healthy way, is to do the same, but using simulation. So simulation allows you to dive into the human body, measure quantities that are impossible to otherwise to obtain. Good example about what is that the simulation can do. And these are the different exercises. This is a battling machine or skiing machine. I don't know what this is called, but it's a sewing that, okay, using this kind of exercise, it, it means this and that in terms of your bone health and your bones strengthening process. These are the mobile, this is a mobile, machine, which is a real-time simulation model. You see more real-time simulation models when you step off from the lecture room and take a look at the sim studio that is located not far from this place. There are different models available. Go and play and tell me how you like it. If there's something you feel that is unrealistic, something that you like it, something that you don't like it, I would be curious to learn. Okay, so this, uh, this is a simulation, real-time simulation means that there's a human that is typically operating the machine. Sometimes we use a real-time simulation, which is very close to the game technology. Sometimes we're using offline simulation. There's many different opportunities. These are the models that are based on artificial intelligence. So we're using faster than a real-time computer. It gives us kind of like opportunity to predict what happens in the future. So we see what happens in the future. That's what's going to happen next day, but few seconds ahead of the time. And using this information, we can control their pendulums and different kind of things. This, by the way, this is another pendulum example. The one, excuse me, I'm going to step off from the camera. This one consists of four bodies connected by revolutoin. It's like four bends that you keep it in upright position. And uh, that was explained to Ren for his learning algorithm, how to keep that in upright position. And they eventually learned it but it needs one billion analyzes to do it. Not million, but billion analyzes. That's much information is needed. Okay, uh, this was uh, artificial intelligence. This is the big story behind. You know, big trend in a modern industry is that business is moving away from making products using conventional like material processing. And is moving away from that to a business that is based on data and knowledge. Data and knowledge is a software business. This is where the simulation comes into play because simulation can offer enhanced information based on digital twins, enhanced information based on embedded models, enhanced information about this and that. And that's where the big promise of the simulation lies. So it's something that I feel that is extremely important all these artificial intelligence, that's all based on simulation. So simulation is needed more than ever. Even though that we have chat GPD, still needs data. Reinforced learning algorithm based on data. So where the data comes from, most often from simulation. Okay, so that's a big promise. And I see that I need to speed up a bit because uh, you guys are getting tired. That is dangerous to sit too long. Soon we need to have a short break. Okay, and then we will continue. All right, summary. Simulation is a shortcut for better products and services. It helps to understand the customer needs, particularly when we're using real-time simulation. I have a lot of examples about that, but it's going to be end of my class uh, just before the Christmas. Then it helps to, uh, to introduce new service based on the data and knowledge. This is a big promise, like I explained. It's uh, make the product development to be more uh, efficient, more productive, improves the quality and performance, makes product to be more reliable. Okay, with that, I'm going to show you that the next topic, which is this math. And the math, I'm going to just say that take a look at the links to Khan's Academy. Fantastic way to learn the math. I trust you do that. And if you are shy with the math, if you're struggling with the details, 
go ahead and uh, refresh your knowledge about math. And if you have never heard about some of the things, go ahead and take a look at from that from the Khan's Academy. Okay, and the next topic, rigid bodies. But before that, I think we need to have a break because I see some of you are getting tired already. So what do we say? Five minutes. Is that enough? Five minutes. But everyone has to stand up. Okay? Five minutes. And then we're back. So online participants, so it's going to be a five minutes break. You two need to stand up and do a little bit of stretching. And then... Uh, Five minutes, we will be back and uh, we continue and there's going to be another half an hour and then you can go home, okay? Look, you know, it's not a big, big deal because, uh, you know, this time is not good for, for some of the students. They can watch the recording. Only problem is that then you miss uh, in-class quizzes. Yeah, and, and my problem is that it's why I like in-class many more than online. So yeah, online. right, right, right. I understand. I understand. So what about, um, so is this Tuesday is in the same time. Yeah. Who is the teacher? I am not, I don't know the name. Okay. All right. But but you said Thursday, uh, not Tuesday. Thursday. Yes, the first lecture on Thursday, which is the funny thing, on the 60 to 80 p.m. And then the in the future is going to be on Tuesdays. Yeah, like some other like the this same time. Tutorials. This odd. Oh, all right, the tutorial is not a big problem because but we yes, have two groups. So we have two groups, so you can select the one that is not conflicting with the, this other class. No, on, on, on Tuesdays, the, he has only one. Oh. Okay. Like Thanks for uh, letting me know this. Letting me know this. So, uh, good information. Yeah, it seems that this uh, curriculum design is uh, harder than uh, than you might think that it is. So, this curriculum design is uh, is quite hard. Yeah, but I'm, I'm sure there is a way to solve it. If nothing else, then you could just uh, follow the recordings. I hope, I, don't need to I hope so too. I hope so too. For, I mean, is that there's already, I see that there are 50 people online. I mean, the research thing has maybe even more because it's only all master courses have this thing. Really? So. Oh, okay, so I thought that is in the mechanical engineering, but it's not. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Good.
Hey guys, are, are we are ready to have a final uh, final heat? Hey, are you done with the of the day? Once uh, we're done with this, to so go back home then. I really admire your attitude, so it's a great attitude you have. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, uh, guys, go, uh, guys, so what do you say, guys? Uh, can we get started again? Ma'am. Okay, so we continue then. <laughs> All right, so this is where the, the fun part is done. The next is uh, what I promised. It's a highly theoretical matters, and we get started from the kinematics. Now, it's extremely important for you to not uh, get confused about the details. You do need to understand the details, but don't get confused about the details. That's why I keep on telling what, you know, what is uh, we currently doing and why are we doing what we're doing. And now we will get started from the kinematics. Kinematics is something that we need to set the rule how we're defining our mechanical or biomechanical system. How we're defining where the each body is located, how is the configuration and so on and so forth. That's how we're gonna get started. And we're gonna start it to do so right here, right now, so today. Okay, <laughs> before we do so, so let me explain to you this multi-body system dynamics. So like I say, so we're using multi-body system dynamics. And uh, by the way, what's up with this, uh, this uh, projector? Because it looked that this is a, uh, can, you, can you see this? Yeah. What is this? Is it already like somehow broken or what? How come it's burning in the lens? Because this was there like just a minute or so. Yeah, online participants, for your information, it seems that our projector is about to die. <laughs> All right. Anyways, so I said that we're going to use a technology, a method called multi-body system dynamics. As the title implies, multi-body. This is a system that can be used for a mechanical system that consists of multiple bodies. You know, sometimes there could be just one moving body. That's possible too. But it's very efficient tool when you have multiple bodies. And what we do in a multi-body system dynamic, exactly what I just explained to you earlier, we make no assumption regarding the magnitude of a rotation. It means that we have to deal with the nonlinear function. In our case, we're gonna deal with the trigonometric functions in a description of system. That's what we're gonna do. So it's going to be sine and cosine that we're going to use, and we are not going to linearize them. We're going to handle as they are. That's why equation of motion will be nonlinear equation of motion. There's another definition that is important related to multi-body system dynamics. And in multi-body systems, the bodies are connected together via joints, motion limitations, something that for his neighboring bodies to move in a certain way. Let me give you an example. You know, the system A here in this slide is a crankshaft system. It consists of three moving bodies that are piston, connection rod, and crankshaft. Now, something that is extremely important to understand when you look at the crankshaft system is that the bodies are connected together via joints. You know, connection rod, is connected to neighboring bodies by revel joint, both end. That means that it's not free to move as it wants, but it can move only in a certain way that is defined by joints. These joints, we're gonna mathematically define by using constraint equations. Constraint equation that limits the motion possibilities. This is a good example about multi-body system dynamics. What's the big benefit of the multi-body system dynamics? That's obviously is the fact that if I take a hold of the piston body and I move piston body back and forth, the two remaining bodies will follow that motion in a certain way because of the constraints. So motion that I'm doing to the piston, 
the other two bodies are following the boson because of the constraint. So this is obviously a multi-body system. Another system, system B here, is not the multi-body system. And it's not the multi-body system because, yes, it is consisting of multiple bodies. But look at the way they are connected. They are connected via springs. They are force connections, not constraint connections. Constraint, mathematically, when we're describing the joint, is an ideal joint. It cannot break, no matter what happens. No matter if there is a big force like here. Even this big force cannot break the joint. Think about it. So then if this force cannot break it, no one can break it. There's no way you can break the force, I'm giving the, the joint. But the springs, they are based on the forces. So no way, if I take a hold of the bottom body here, and if I press that downwards, I don't know based on the kinematics where the bottom, where the second body is located at. It's based on the forces. So it's not based on the most analysis, it's not based on the constraint. So you understand the difference? You understand the difference? Something that is not moving, something that is standing still is not the multi-body system. Another example, so if you have a house, not the multi-body system, it's not moving anywhere. Okay, let me ask you this. What's not the multi-body system? Because you can, you can think about, think about this and, uh, so let me, uh, let me put this on. So let me put this on and you can, uh, let me see where I am. Okay, next question, so this one. I will show this to online participants momentarily. And what happened to this one? It went down here, <clears throat> here, this one. Okay, okay, so, uh, so let me explain what I have here. I have a biomechanical system, I have that option A, is that a biomechanical system or not? Is that a consisting of multiple bodies that are connected together via joints? B is a robotic system. D is a front suspension of a vehicle. And D is a, is a bridge. By the way, all these pictures are made by using artificial intelligence. That's why they don't represent anything you can find in a real life. I'm getting to be a big fan of uh, yeah, GPD and uh, Bing, AI, and so on and so forth. So you will see that a lot in my lectures. Okay. One or more is not the multi-body system. So go ahead and enter your answer, the circulative system, and uh, I will take a look. Uh, okay, so I have display. I think it is going to be okay if I look at this one. Okay, I got, uh, last time I got 80 answers, so now I have 50, 55 answers. So online participants, you can communicate as that much as you want. Use WhatsApp or whatever, you guys can communicate as much as you want. So try to figure out what is not the multi-body system, one or more is not. What's the correct answer? What's gonna be success rate this time? Last time we scored 100%. Another 100%? Another 100%? Seriously? You guys are developing a little bit up-nose attitude now. So you, you really think it is, uh, is 100%? <laughs> Only participants don't hear you. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> okay. Very good. Very good. So uh, 71. So we, okay. So we have a little bit of uh, delay, what goes in our online participants, but in five, four, you guys all done? Three, two. Okay, okay, look at that. So one more, and then we're in the same number. We started, the, we got last time. You say 100%, right? Any, any other curses? 80, 80, 80, so we have 80 here, 90. 90, 90, I'm with you, so I'm 92, so I'm thinking 90%. Okay, we have 90, 91 participants, and the result is this. Oh, that disappointment, but no, uh, this is, 
I, I said that, the, like I said, you, you started to develop this up, up nose attitude that I don't need to listen Aki anymore because I figured yeah. out everything a while ago. That's not the case here. So you know that uh, it's okay. It's still okay, but could be a bit better. The bridge. Yes, sir. It's uh, something that it would be better to analyze using then the structure, like a final Telman method. If, uh, if you think about the deformation, because we are having the black and white world here in the beginning. So we only consider e bodies to be rigid. Yes, sir. Expansion bridge. No, 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 no way, no way. <laughs> So should I give a point of the of the bridge as well? No, okay, I, I'm gonna consider that. Okay, good try. I like that. I like it when you're building a case against me. Very good. Very much appreciated. Very much appreciated. Any complaints from online participants? No complaints. Okay, so moving on. Okay. Now comes something extremely important you to understand. Now, like I explained. Multi-body system consists of multiple bodies. But mo what makes a body? What makes a body? Bodies are consisting of infinite number of particles. Now, this is a theoretical concept. You don't really see the particle. Particle is not something that you can see in a real life. You just cannot go to the grocery store and say, hey, I want to get the 100 particles here. No, no, that's not that. It's a point that we're thinking that makes the body. So it's a concept. Particle is a concept. But what it is important concept for us? It is extremely important concept because point, when you think about this very, very tiny, this tiny, so small, it comes with the big benefit. And the big benefit is the fact that its rotation is immaterial. So its rotation makes no sense. You do not have a rotational decrease of freedom. And if you do not have a rotational decrease of freedom, it makes mathematical definition of particle to be very pleasant. Because we only need to know where that is located. That's all we need to know. Nothing but the location. Because again, rotation makes no difference. Problem is this, that there's so many particles that that's a little bit of challenge for us. But please understand that the multi-body system consists of bodies. Number of bodies that are connected together via joints. Like you see in this slide, one party is consisting of infinite number of particles. How much is infinite? Infinite, that's so much that you cannot even understand how much it is. It's as many as drops in ocean. So that's what it means, okay? Particles is something that we are after. So what we really wanted to do in the kinematics is that we would like to know where the particles are located with respect to reference coordinate system. What is this reference coordinate system? Reference coordinate system is something that is a coordinate system that you have often heard that is mentioned as a global coordinate system, typically not moving. So it's standing still. It can move as well, but Let's just make our life more enjoyable and let's create that is a global coordinate system not moving anywhere at all. So something that we are measuring our dynamics with respect. Okay, here's the challenge we have. So we would like to measure where the particle is located. And I really would like to use my pen to do the drawings. Let me see if I can uh, make a, this one. Maybe that's possible now. No, no, it's not willing to do the drawings. Anyway, so, uh, so let me put this in a slightly different uh, view like this one momentarily. So what I have here, I have a potato shaped body, random shaped body that is called A. And what I'm highlighting here is that three particles. Remember there's a much more, much, much more. But just to, you know, to get the concept, I have highlighted here three particles. And my task here is to describe these particles. This one, this one, 
And this one, with respect to this coordinate system. And remember again, rotation is immaterial. Rotation is not important to me at all, but I need to know where they are at with respect to my global coordinate system. So how can I make it happen? Well, very simple. I just use a, like you say, like uh, somebody already in the audience proposed, so let's just use a vectors. Vectors that consist of two components because this is a planar case. This is a two dimensional space. So each of these vectors, they consist of two components that are projections in global X and Y axis. Let me just make this clear to you. So these are the vectors that are consisting of, uh, so like this one, consists of Rx component, Ry component. So these two, excuse me, three vectors are vectors of two components each. Okay, so this is possible, but not very efficient. Why not efficient? Because now I have three particles and I already need to use two, four, six components to describe them. And think about it, if I have infinite number of particles, this becomes to be no go. This is impossible because I have so many vectors, so many unknowns that this makes no sense to use it. So I need to use more clever technique than this. More clever technique would be the one that I'm introducing body reference coordinate system. Oh, not this one, but uh, this one. Body reference coordinate system that I'm attaching to body. The body reference coordinate system translates with the body, rotates with the body. So the body rotates, the body coordinate system rotates as well. So it's adapts rigidly to the body. So no matter what happens to your body, the same, exactly same will happen to your body reference coordinate system. What's the benefit? Now the big benefit is this, that particles with respect to my new coordinate system, body reference coordinate system, their location is constant. So I can describe not just my three particles, but all the particles in my system using this body reference coordinate system. Okay, so this is nice. So now I can use my additional vectors, which is called vector U-bar. The vector U-bar is a definition in the body reference coordinate system to take these three particles into account and more. I can use my uh, math skill to integrate every single particle within the boundaries of the body. And now I can figure out what's my inertia properties of my body. So I know how are the particles divided within the boundaries of the body. So it becomes to make sense. But remember my Final goal is to know where the particles is located with respect to my reference coordinate system. So this is not yet my final solution because you know what? When I'm adding my vector that describes where the body reference coordinate system is located with respect to my global coordinate system plus vector U bar, this is not gonna be my definition in global coordinate system because my body reference coordinate system rotates and that's why vector U bar projection in my global coordinate system changes. So it's not constant. It is constant with respect to my body coordinate system, but not with respect to my global coordinate system. You understand that? Because if I rotate my, my body, then the U bar projection changes with respect to global X and Y. What should I do? I need to use my math skills and I need to take a look at a little bit about these projections that I'm after. So let's look at these projections. So let's uh, first look at the projection in a global X direction, which is, again, I'm gonna use my drawings. For some reason, I don't know why is that I'm unable to use this um, in this other presentation mode. So I'm gonna look at the, this one here. This projection of the vector U bar in my global coordinate axis. Remember what I'm after. I have here this vector U bar is a little bit of small font, but this projection in a global X direction is this one here. How can I know it? I know that if I know what is my angle of my body reference coordinate system, which is called theta here, and then the angle of vector U bar with respect to my body coordinate system, which is 
alpha here. So once I know these two information, I can express my x as it is shown here. This is the length of micro u bar that is multiplied by cosine alpha plus theta. That's the scalar quantity. So when I think the length of the vector, that's the scalar. Uh, when I multiply that by those trigonometric functions, I'm going to get the scalar component that is a projection in my global x direction. So you say yes. Very good. So you say, is it like, still like this? Uh, everyone? Like this? Or a little bit like this? Can you, I, I, the door is in that direction if you have a hard time to fight it. Still, this is easy. Not a big problem. We get started like this. And once we're doing more mathematical manipulation, it progressively becomes to be more difficult. All right, so that's my x. What about my y? Same story except this time is sine alpha plus theta. And I need to know the length of the vector u bar, and that's gonna give me my scalar quantity. Okay, that's all the, this is all pretty much all the you need to do to figure out the kinematics in multi-body system dynamics. Rest is mathematics, nothing but mechanical mathematics. And this is where I'm hoping you not to get confused. You just take a symbolic math tool and it will do the job for you, like just like that. So don't get confused what follows next, because I'm going to use these trigonometric relations. Using these trigonometric relations, I can express my your matrix, I mean the vector your with respect to global coordinate x axis and y axis as it is shown here. This is pure math, pure manipulation, nothing but the pure math. And what I'm about to do next is this. So I'm gonna use these mathematical manipulations. I'm gonna use this information that you can also clearly see here, how is a projection in a body reference coordinate system. Again, a manipulation that is uh, not too difficult when you're using these math tools. And when I'm using these manipulations, I can finally express the relation with my, between my vector u bar expressed in a global coordinate system, vector u bar expressed by using my body reference coordinate system. They are related using something that is called rotation matrix, which is a two by two matrix expressing x and y axis of the body reference coordinate system with respect to global coordinate system. So this one here is my mapping matrix. So it's mapping my representation from one coordinate system, local, to global. And if you look at this, this is mathematically orthogonal matrix. You know, orthogonality means that vectors that you form from the columns of the matrix are perpendicular with respect to each other. And that's they are. They are unit in length, but unit in length is not the definition of uh, orthogonality. It's, all, it's enough if their vectors are perpendicular with respect to each other. And if you look at them closely, this column here represents the body x axis. This column here represents the body y axis. That's what they are. These axes are perpendicular meaning there are 90 degrees of freedom, I mean 90 degrees of angle with respect to each other. That's kinematics. <laughs> no comments. Okay, no, uh, so how you feel? Everything makes sense? Or none of this thing makes sense? Okay, this is my mapping. This is what I need because I need to convert my representation from body reference coordinate system to global coordinate system. So I'm done with my description of rigid bodies. And it goes like this. Let me take this back to this presentation mode like this. It goes like this. My kinematics consists of two components. First, I have a vector that defines which the, where there is a body reference coordinate system is located at 
with respect to my reference coordinate system. That's my vector R. Then I have this rotation matrix that takes the rota orientation of body reference coordinate system into account. And finally, my final traveling to the, where the particle is located is going to be defined by vector U bar. That's it. Now we're going to practice to use it. And I know that you guys need to be off momentarily. So one practice, and then we are off. So here it is. So I have here beam-like body. And the beam-like body is, and let me, let me put this in a little bit of different presentation mode that I can do my drawings. So I have my beam-like body. And it's mentioned here in a text that the beam-like body is made in such the way the body reference coordinate system is located in the one end of the beam-like body. OK? And it mentioned that it is notated, rotated uh, 90 degrees, which is B divided by 2. OK? And it's, uh, the uh, body coordinate system is translated two units in a global x direction, one unit in a global y direction. It's mentioned here in the text. Where this end of the beam is located with respect to global coordinate system. Very simple. So we substitute the information we know, the equation we learned a little while.